guys, what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own bucket server, which is your own Minecraft server. Um, we're gonna be using Bucket to make our server, so that's gonna be our server host. I find that it's better than all, like, the original, like, vanilla server, because you can use plugins and mods and stuff on your server, which are great, because it makes the game more fun. So what you first you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your web browser, type in bucket. Okay, it should be the first one, bucket.org, right here. Click on that, and then you wanna go to wanna go to get craft bucket, and you're gonna click on you're gonna scroll down right a bit. It says Windows. It works for any of them. So you just click on that, download it. I'm not gonna download it because I already have it. So once it's downloaded, what you're going to do is you're going to make a folder on your desktop. And, um, just name it whatever you want. I'm going to call this Bucket Server. So once you got Bucket Server, what you're going to do is you're going to drag in that, um, that th file you just grabbed. Or downloaded, I guess. You're going to take that, drag it in here. And you're going to rename this file to... Craft bucket, just craft bucket, just delete all this gibberish. Oops. So it should be craft bucket dot jar. You just want to leave it like that. Now, what you're going to do is you are going to open up text edit. Text edit. And you are going to click new document. And I will have this link in the description, so um, you're just going to copy, or not the link, the this code right here. Just copy that and uh, paste it. And uh, once you have that, you can, this is basically how much memory you want to use on your server. I have an 8 gigabyte computer, so I usually put 3G, M stands for megabytes. So just put 3G and uh, 3 G. So that's that'll give three gigabytes of RAM to my server out of the eight that I have. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna go to format and click make plain text. Click OK. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to file, save. And else is important what you save it as. It's gonna be S T A R T start dot C O M M A N D. It's important that it's dot command. Otherwise, your server will not work, and you're just going to want to save it to your desktop. Save. And then you can just exit. Here's mine. Oops. Right here. What you're going to do is you're going to just drag that into your bucket server. Now you're going to open up terminal. Once you have in terminal, you're going to want to type in chmod space a plus x space and then you just want to drag in that start.command file you just made and then click enter Oops. now it shouldn't do anything what that does is it just gives it permission to run the start.command file now you can just quit terminal and now you're done so what you gotta do just double click start.command should start it, should run all this gibberish, prepare the spawn area, and do all that stuff. And once that's done, you just type in, well, I'll show you in a second. But what it's going to do is it's going to create all these folders in your, um, your server, or your folder that you just created. Now the reason why you make it in a folder is so you don't get all these files scattered about on your computer. So they're, they're all contained in that folder, and it's a lot easier to start and stuff. So your plugins folder, that's, you can download plugins off the internet. They are always .jar files, just drag the .jar file in. You can download them off bucket.org. Excuse me, just go over on their plugins side and um, search any plugin you want. And the, the only things you really need to look at are the band IPs, band players, and the ops, the server properties, and the server log. I mean, if you really want to look at that, it's just basically what the what that is. But those are all the main files. The ops is like making them an admin of your server so they can 
basically like control and do it. Do whatever you can do. So I I'm always an op. I don't like to make friends on my servers ops normally because then you know they can do whatever they want and they can like cheat and not be in survival and stuff like that. So that's really that's all you have to pay attention to is who you op and um your banned IPs that's just if you ban players and stuff, they'll show up there. You can type their name in right there and they're double click this little set text edit. So you're gonna double click server properties. Now you don't have to do this, this isn't mandatory. But you can change all the different properties of your server. So I'm gonna allow the nether, that's true. The level or the level name, that's just doesn't really matter really. Enable query. Uh, I don't really know what that does. Allow flight. I'm gonna change that to true. Now uh, that doesn't allow them to just double click the space bar and then to fly and survival, just like in creative. Server port. If you have a if you port forwarded, then you would type in the port that you port forwarded on. Um, so that's basically just to make your server public and stuff like that. So the level type default enable archon. I don't know what that does. The level seed. If you know seed, just type it in there. I don't know seed, so I'm just gonna delete that. Your server IP. If you have an IP for your server, if you have it port forwarded, you type in the IP there. Most of the times you don't have to. The max build height. Change that to whatever you want to. Spawn NPCs. Change that to whatever you want to. That's if you want the, to make like little villages and stuff. The whitelist, that's like people who can and cannot join your server. It's like a VIP list. You can turn that on, you can turn that off. Spawn animals, I usually have that on because then you can't, you, you can get like meat and stuff from them and wool and then you wouldn't be able to make a bet if you had that to false. Uh, snooper, I don't know what that does. Hardcore, so if you want hardcore mode enabled. Texture pack, whatever check texture pack you want. I usually don't have a texture pack on my server, that's just me. But whatever you really want to do, the online mode, true, if you want to have your friends join it. PvP, that's fighting if you want to be able to kill other players and stuff. I usually have that on true. Difficulty 1. Difficulty 1 is survival mode. Difficulty 0 is creative mode. Or no, 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 I have that, I have that mixed up. Difficulty 1 is like easy and so forth. Game mode 0, that is survival. 1 is creative and uh, those are basically the two game modes. Max players change that to whatever you want to. I usually just keep it on twenty if you have wa if you want to have more or less, whatever you want. Spawn monsters I usually leave that on true because it gives a little challenge to the game. Generate structures I give that true too, like NPC villages and stuff. The view distance that's however far you want your server to or you want your to be able to view on your server, and the message of the day. You can change that to whatever you want to. I'm going to change this to YouTube test. And then once you're done with just editing, do whatever you want, whatever you really want to do with your personal, it's your personal preference really. Once you have that, I mean everything else, it's really it's nothing really you want to mess with. The server properties and the start dot command are the only things you really need to mess with. Um, as far as changing your server and stuff like that. See, now this is done over here. You can see it's prepared the spawn and everything. Now you're just going to type in stop. And you have to do this every time you want to stop your server, or else you can seriously wreck your server by just exiting out of terminal. You want to type in stop. That, that will save everything and close all the chunks and everything like that. So that's the way to stop your server. That's the only way you should stop your server unless you want it to be seriously broken. I already said that. So once you do that, just start dot command. It'll start it up again. Um, it'll be a lot shorter this time. See, it's already done right there. And um, now you can go into Minecraft. And you can... Wait for this to load, and then you go into multiplayer. And um, this is my server. See, it says YouTube test. I have all my servers port, or I have a, I have port forwarded my router, so all my servers automatically go to my um, IP that I have right there. This is my server. If you want to play on it, Skype message me. Um, if you want to Skype message me, just leave a comment down below, and I will give you my Skype. 
So yeah, now if you don't have it port forwarded, it, it you you won't be able to join your your friends won't be able to join your server. So what you just do to apply on your server by yourself, you type in local host. It's done. See here's here's your server. It's a YouTube test. Blah blah blah, and you just join the server. Make this full. And it's gonna be laggy the first time you get on there because it's gonna generate the chunks and everything. But um, once you did oh, this good survival island seed. Whoa! I might use this. <laughs> Maybe not once chunks load. But anyway, I mean, you're on your server. You can break stuff. Just really do whatever you want. Like I said, it is really laggy the first time you come on your server. Just gotta let your chunks load and stuff like that. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to put put them in comments down below. Um, I'll answer them. I'm pretty active on YouTube. So, yeah. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed. Rate, comment, and subscribe. See you guys.